O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Tommy O'Brien filling in for my dad, Tom O'Brien. Uh, he'll be back tomorrow, but boy, what a day to fill it in the chair. Uh, we got an action-packed hour, folks. Thanks for tuning in. We got the S&Ps up an even 100 points as I come to you. We're up 2% in the S&Ps right now, trading at 5,097. The whole market trading higher on the heels of some pretty hot NVIDIA numbers. We jump over to the NASDAQ 100. You're talking about 531 points to the upside a rise of 3% on those numbers, pretty dramatic. Dow catching a bit of more than 1%, so you get the Dow up 1%, S&P's up an even two, NASDAQ 100 up an even 3%, pretty easy numbers. Russell, they're up half a percent, up 11 points for the Russell at 2012. You jump over to crude, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, crude right now backing off, we almost made it to 79, we're trading at 78.52, and let's just jump into it, man. NVIDIA shares, as I mentioned, Biggest day ever in the market. You're going to add about, I mean, about 2.5 billion shares outstanding for that company. So at $100, you're talking about $250 billion in market cap added. I was reading an article earlier today. The CEO, he's about to crack the top 20 in terms of wealthiest people in the world. Rightfully so, when you have a company that is larger now than Amazon, than Google, um, pretty remarkable, the acceleration, and it's not stopping. The AI run might just be beginning as we got new all-time highs on NVIDIA, up by 15.4%. I mean, you can, you, can, you can jump around wherever you want in this market, man. We got dramatically higher prices. AMD up 11.4%. Microsoft shares up 2.2%. You jump over to Amazon, a 3.5% acceleration to the upside. Companies like Salesforce up by 3.4% right now. You jump over to Apple, up by 1.3% right now. You're trading near 185 from 184.67. And let's get into some of those NVIDIA numbers. The bar couldn't be higher and they beat it, man. Revenue in the current period, okay? They beat in the period that we just, get, we just reported for, but in terms of the 90 days that we're in right now, $24 billion, the market was looking for 21.9 billion. Quite a substantial beat when you think about on a percentage basis, whatever it is, uh, you look at the acceleration that they have had in terms of earnings, in terms of revenue. Okay, the quotes from the CEO. Generative, a generative e AI, excuse me, has kicked off a whole new investment cycle that will lead to a doubling of the world's data center installed base over the next five years and represent an annual market opportunity in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Pretty remarkable. Now, who are their customers? About the best customers you can have in the world, man. Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, and Alphabet's Google are NVIDIA's largest customers, accounting for nearly 40% of their revenue as they rush to invest in hardware for AI computing. Yeah, and you talk about percentages, growth, okay? This is how you come into an earnings per share that some view as extraordinary to the upside, okay? NVIDIA's data center division, now by far its largest source of sales, 18.4 billion in revenue, up 409% from the same period a year earlier. Gaming chips providing 2.87 billion in sales. I mean, the ramp up is just remarkable, man. Data center revenue, right? Fiscal year, 2024, $47.5 billion. A couple years ago, you were at 10.6 billion. A couple years before that, you were at 3 billion. Just remarkable, man. Uh, they got a partnership with NVIDIA they'd already announced. That's not news on this release. Um, okay, so we jump from that story, all right, and let me make sure I can find this one. Because when you jump to, well, this is an important one as well, there's your jump. They're the biggest market capitalization companies, uh, days that market, that individual equities have had. There's Meta earlier this month. There's NVIDIA when they really kicked things off in May of last year when they added $184 billion in market cap. And right now, I think at the price, we're probably above 250. Now, this is a pretty cool chart, man, from Bloomberg, an article Bloomberg had this morning. And let's pull up the headline real quick, okay, to give you some context. What bubble? NVIDIA profits are rising even more than the stock. This is how you rationalize an EP earnings per share that is just remarkable to the upside. How do you do it? You keep beating, you keep growing. In the black here, we have the P-E ratio, okay? In the red, we have the share price. And what has happened? You've actually seen the P.E. ratio drop pretty dramatically from the high 60s back in the middle of last year to dipping below 25 at one point. You're now talking about a number near 30. 
uh, they just keep beating. And that's as the stock has risen from a price of about 300 to pushing what? That's as of the close probably yesterday, right? Because we're looking at a number on this chart that's about 700. And what are we trading right now in NVIDIA shares? 778 for NVIDIA shares to the upside. Um, so they're coming into it, man. And, and the CEO sounds very strong. He's talking about numbers that could last through this year as we power forward. Yeah. Um, well, this is one of the analysts out there. But yeah, I got a few articles that we could spend some time on for NVIDIA, man. They're topping that. Yeah, upbeat forecast. All right, we jump around to what else we have going on. We got to talk about AT&T on a day like today, man. We're getting a glimpse of what may happen at some point, folks, as we all become very reliant on internet connections, connect connectivity, our phones. They get a big disruption. Not sure exactly what is going on just yet. Nonetheless, AT&T down by 2.5% on a day that is uh, to the upside like we haven't seen in some time. So they're getting helped by a positive market as well, but they are struggling. The other company struggling is Rivian. Absolutely amazing vehicles that they make, man. But boy, they have a problem. Talked about this earlier on my program at 9 o'clock this morning. They're going to make as many cars this year as they made last year. That is not what's supposed to be happening for this company, man. EVs are in trouble, to put it lightly. lightly. Um, and I was even, I mean, these cars are amazing, man. I, I've looked at a Rivian around the parking lot once. You're in beautiful cars, expensive cars. You're spending almost six figures for a vehicle. You better be getting a, a solid vehicle. You got a few solid choices at that price level, of course. But boy, for the first time ever, I said, man, they have a cash crunch going on at some point. They're losing dramatic amounts of money. There seems to be a demand weakness across the board for EVs. And you got this company trading at 11 bucks. Think that's an all-time low? Let's check it out. Yeah, that's an all-time low today, man. Well off, as I talked about when they pushed this out to the public at remarkably $100 per share, even higher than that at the end of 2021. You jump over to Tesla. And Tesla not getting impacted, though, as Rivian's got some issues they got to deal with, man. Tesla positive with the market today. S&P's up and even 100 points. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to come back. We're going to be talking to Ed Egelinski, Managing Director with Direction. We'll talk a little bit of markets, talk a little bit of ETFs. Looking forward to it. Don't go away. We'll be right back, folks.